What's up guys, Mike Wiedemach here from the Fabulous YouTube Studios. This one I titled, Don't Believe the Hype, Listen to Mike. It's kind of cool, I think. Anyway, so I had a couple of new clients last week, which I'm very grateful for. And I realized that there is a lot of still misinformation out there as to what you need to do to get in shape, okay? So people are still overwhelmed. So I just listed 10 things that you don't need to do. Number one is, one of my clients said, I, I feel like if I don't puke in the workout, or if I don't work really hard, it's not gonna get me anywhere. Let me tell you, I've trained with people who won the Olympics, who went world record level, they don't puke, okay? Think about it. Cristiano Ronaldo, arguably one of the best soccer players on the planet, he trains three times a day. Do you think he goes beast mode every single time? It's not possible, okay? Working out is more like work or studying. You just do it every day and then at the end you get a diploma or your promotion or whatever, right? But you don't have this, this breakthrough study day, so that's total hocus pocus. So frequency beats anything. Number two is I must train till absolute failure. That's also hocus pocus because A, that's dangerous, okay? That's how stuff happens when weights dangle over you. Number two is that you have to train for hours every day to look great. That's not true. The average person who just wants to look hot at the beach, four hours a week in a reasonable diet, will get you to the promised land, no problem, okay? Four, five at the most, okay? So, yes, this might cut into your Netflix time, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a time commitment. Number three, people believe that unless you train to absolute failure, you're not doing anything. That's also not true because failure is dangerous because that means the weight controls you and that's how stuff happens, like, you know, bones, whatever, right? So you can train to mechanical failure, which means you're losing form and you stop there. That's totally fine. But you gotta remember, frequency beats intensity. So the more often you can train, the more gains you will make. Now think about like, let's say Cristiano Ronaldo. He trains three times a day. Do you think he goes to failure every single time? It's not possible, right? He works on his skills and he gets better successively. So you gotta think of training more in the sense of, you know, going to work, building a career. You just do a little bit and you get better. Yeah, I need to do like these crazy jumping movements and explosive and whatever. No, you don't. Stop, stop doing that, okay? No jumping, and you know why? Because, let's backtrack. What do people want? There's two things. They wanna be bigger or leaner, or ideally both, right? So the key to losing body fat or building muscle, aside from a diet, is to create tension. The more tension you create in a muscle, the more it will stay with you as you're dieting or the more it will grow as you're working. But how can you not create tension? When you jump around, right? So anything that's unstable, unless you're pursuing a sport that requires that, it's a different story. But people that come to me, they just wanna look hot. They don't say it per se, but that's really what they're after. So no jumping. The next issue is that you need to forego an entire macro group, like never eat carbs. Okay, with every diet or meal plan or whatever, always ask yourself, can I do this for a long time, like years, okay? So I know about you, but I'm not going without pasta or bread for years. That's just stupid, okay? Or the same as when people say, you can never eat this particular food. There's no rhyme or reason to that because that is just a made up rule, okay? Macros and calories matter. Where they come from is meaningless. Whenever somebody tells you like, don't eat anything that grows under the earth, only eat stuff that grows above the earth, that's total hocus pocus, okay? So that needs to go. So, and then, as I consult my notes, people are also under the impression that they have to quit salt, because salt's evil. Salt's great, okay? You know what happens if you don't eat salt? You die, you die, okay? The Romans got paid in salt, hence the name salary, okay? That doesn't mean you should be gorging on salt, but think about it. How many surfers in California fall off their surfboards dead? Too much salt. Swallowed salt water, didn't make it. Nobody, okay? The potassium sodium ratio matters. So if you eat a reasonable amount of vegetables that have potassium, you'll be just fine. 
no need to quit salt. Salt doesn't bloat you overnight. Maybe in some crazy universe, if you could eat, let's say, 10 days, you eat zero salt, okay, which would be dangerous, by the way. But for some reason, you, you make it, and then you go to a barbecue place. You probably gain like a couple of pounds of water for a day or two, but then it comes back out, okay? So salt is just fine. From there on, you also don't need to do hours of cardio. So cardio, despite popular belief, is not the greatest fat loss tool invented. It's okay. It's not that great. Now, if you need to burn a couple more calories, fine, put it in. But if you're doing hours of cardio, that just means your diet is not in check. So check your diet, and then if needed, add cardio in five minute blocks. So like week one, five minutes after the workout, week two, 10, and so on and so forth, okay? The same goes for, <coughs> sorry, timing your meals. So people like eat every three hours, this, that, the other, stop, okay? Calories on a weekly tangent matter most. So most people get by with about three meals and a snack. So the meal frequency depends directly on the caloric intake. An example, when I was swimming in the olden days, as my daughter says, I was eating about 10,000 calories a day. Now 10,000 calories require six meals, right? Because that's a lot of calories per meal. But if you're only eating, let's say 1,500, why would you make it six meals? That's just being miserable. And the last point, point number 10, is the one that irks me the most. And I blame these shows like the biggest loser and all that garbage for that, is that idea that in general, to get in shape, you have to be miserable, you have to live like a monk, have no friends, never go out, and just be in the gym all the time. And that is simply not true, okay? Training is a privilege. It means you, I, live in a country, in a place where we can train, okay? There's no war going on, we have enough food, we have enough heat, AC in the summer, we have spare time, we have medical provisions that allow us to train, okay? Training, the gym is basically an adult playground. That's really what it is. So the idea of like, oh, I gotta suffer and I'm gonna be miserable and it, no, that's not true at all, okay? You should enjoy your workouts. They should make you feel better going out than coming, you should feel energized. You should be proud of what you accomplish. And yes, you can absolutely go out. Just, you know, use common sense as you order your food and whatever. And yes, you should have friends. I mean, that's a terrible idea. So this whole like, unless you're eating only lettuce with uh, like lime juice and you gotta do cardio before you even wake up and, and drink bulletproof tea, that's all complete nonsense. So to summarize, train your whole body with weights at least twice a week. Eat a reasonable diet, create tension, and live life and you'll be okay. Mike out. <laughs>